Hi, I'm Claire. I teach computer applications technology here in Johannesburg. You know how your teacher always tells you to practice past papers? Yeah, that doesn't really help if you don't know how to do half of the stuff. That's what this is for. You'll find a link to the files in the description below, along with the table of contents, so you can just click straight to the question you need help with. We all learn the best from our mistakes, so please, you have to try this by yourself before you watch this video. Let's get into it. Okay, we'll start off by inserting our examination number in the header. So, safest way, right click, edit header, and just pop in your examination number. Now we're going to work with this first line of text here, prevalence of diabetes, and I'm going to set the character spa spacing to 120. So I open up the font dialog launcher and I go to advanced and the scale, you'll see 120 is not available. So I'll just type in the two and say, okay. Next, I need to add a text border around this. Now you'll see if I select the whole row, the whole line, and I insert a border, it actually puts it around the whole lot. And that's because of the hidden uh, enter mark that's actually being selected at this moment. If I switch on my show hide, you'll see that's what happens. So when I select it, I have to select it and then undo the selection or just basically move my cursor back and not select that um, paragraph character at the end. And then I can switch on outside borders and then it'll do it just like the picture. For this paragraph, I need to change the spacing of the paragraph and the lines. So I'll select the paragraph and I'm going to open the paragraph dialog launcher and I'm going to set the after spacing to three. Now just check here, if I go up and down, it goes in intervals of six. So I'm going to delete the six and just type in three. Don't delete the PT as well because then it changes the measurement unit. Line spacing, double. Now, if you look at the example, um, they give you that you need to indent this paragraph. You'll see they actually um, show you the measurements on the ruler. So just have a look there. They show you the measurements on the ruler. So clearly the left indent is by three and the right indent is on 15 by the ruler. Just keep that in mind. Now look here. Firstly, I need to switch on my ruler, view ruler. Now I'm going to select this paragraph and I'm going to go to the paragraph dialog launcher again because I don't want to do this by hand and then I make a mistake. So I'm going to change the left indentation to three and the right indentation can't be 15. Um, this is by how many centimeters it's indented. So from 17 to 15 will be two centimeters. Lastly, in the example, they said also you need to note the justification. So I'm just going to justify it as well. And then you'll see it matches the example. Now I need to um, insert a hyperlink on this first bullet. So I'm going to select it, right click hyperlink. And it's a place in this document, uh, the heading introduction. Now I'm going to work with this shape and I need to fill it with a picture. So you could right click and go to format auto shape. You're welcome to, but you'll see as soon as you click on the shape, we have an on demand ribbon toolbar that's available, drawing tools, format. And you can just remember anytime you're working with any kind of object, if there is an on demand toolbar at the top here, odds are you're going to get what you need in there. So I need to fill this shape, not with a color, but with a picture. So I'm going to work offline and go to your file. Now we're looking at this table. There's always a table question. People, you need to know your tables. Okay, I need to sort this data by the minimum and then by the maximum percentage. Now, if there was only one row of headers, I could have just selected the whole table, but also not because then it would have sorted the last row as well. So I just want to sort these rows. So I just select the rows that I want to sort and I go to table tools. See again, on demand table tools. So I go to layout and I'm going to sort it and minimum is in column two. 
and maximum is in column three because I said first by minimum then by maximum ascending okay then I need to enter a function into this last row um, to determine the average minimum percentage and I need to format it to a specific number of decimals before I do that I just want to show you something quick so did you know you can do a formula and depending on your position it tells you which text it will actually or which um, cells it will use so because I'm to the left of the numbers it automatically wants to do a sum to the left um, it can also do a sum or an average or whatever to the top as well uh, above so you have an above below left and right so in this instance the formula the formula will refer to the cells above but we don't want to do a sum so you can either just type in average or you can just paste the function but you'll see when you paste the function it actually pastes the brackets as well so I already have the brackets with the words above so I can just delete that now the number format is the tricky one it needs to be formatted to one decimal place so the correct way to do this is to go and choose your number format here so this would be to two decimal places and if you look carefully there isn't one with just one so I'm going to select this one or I could have chosen this one doesn't matter um, and I'm going to delete one of the zeros because I don't want it formatted to two decimal places only one decimal place so one zero after the full stop okay now I need to use a feature to have both of these heading rows repeated so that the moment I select them you'll see repeat header rows is available and there it's repeated automatically on the next page okay let's have a look the next one we need to insert a footnote on this text distiller says now uh, you're welcome to try it out but trust me the best way is to stand right um, with your cursor right after it now it's not a footnote in the regular position of the bottom of the page it's a footnote that has the position below text so I'm gonna use my footnote dialog launcher and I'm gonna change the position to below text and when I say insert and just type in what they want if you want to check whether you've done it correctly or you're marking you can just right click on this and go to note options and check that the location is correct now we're changing smart art and we're adding an extra bullet so I'm just selecting the smart art again I have an on-demand ribbon tool available over here if this little text box didn't come up by itself if you go to design you can switch on the text pane over there so it's the smart art design not the regular design um, tab so then I'm just gonna click at the end of the first bullet press enter and then I've got space for an extra bullet and you'll see it's already in the correct format next I need to insert a little text box here next to the picture and turn it sideways so I'm gonna go to text box I'm not gonna use one of the built-in ones I'm gonna draw one myself and just type in what's your number all right so just quickly pay attention here you'll see I think if you remember from grade 10 I think we did in grade 10 when one types a single quotation mark word automatically converts it to a, a smart uh, quotation mark so it actually um, rounds it a bit and if you undo directly after doing that it changes it back to a straight quote just keep that in the back of your mind we're going to look at that now so now to twist this around I can't actually rotate this whole block I need to change the text direction there you go and then I can change the size of my text box to something that's going to look like the example and you'll see for some reason because it's a smart quote um, it's, it has that extra space now they didn't lose any one a mark but if you're interested in how to fix it if you just press a single quotation mark and you press undo immediately then it changes it to a straight quote which doesn't leave that ugly space there now we need to insert a citation so we go to the space they've given references now under insert citation you'll see the source they are referring to is not available here so we need to add a new source and it's not a book it's an electronic source citation so 
got to change this to electronic source and they've just given us the title and the year so that's all you type in lastly we need to insert a bibliography underneath the heading provided so you'll see here if you use bibliography and you use one of the built-in styles it actually inserts the heading as well you wouldn't have lost your marks but just to be neat I prefer using this bottom one insert bibliography it's also an automatic bibliography but then it doesn't insert a heading along with it. <laughs>